from somewhere in the skies above us have come from time to time flaming disks and weird aerial phenomena. What are they? Whence have they come? Dr. Morris Aviot, one of the leading aerodynamicists in the world, stated that in his opinion, they have originated elsewhere than the Earth and that they are artificially controlled. Yes, they could be craft from another planet or a development of enemy power. But whatever they are, they continue to cause a great deal of concern and controversy. And when we are tempted to say that they are just a fiction writer's dream, we must remember that Jules Verne once dreamed of exploring the ocean depths. And in time, we had the submarine. Leonardo da Vinci also prophesied that someday man would fly like a bird. Today, flying is commonplace. Even the atom bomb thrilled readers of fiction magazines before it became a reality. In fact, the author was so realistic in his description of a terrifying destructive force that he was investigated by the FBI, who thought he had gotten secret information from government laboratories. But now man dreams of limitless power to propel us into outer space, where we can explore other worlds. So, while travel to another planet may seem highly imaginative to us today, in the year 2000, it may be commonplace. about 17,000 miles per hour. Just as it passes over the Indian Ocean, we lose communication. This is expected. The communications link we have through satellites to Orion is momentarily lost. But Orion continues to receive and process data. Its computers can handle 480 million instructions per second. Imagine you are traveling with Orion as the flight test continues. One orbit completed. Time to go. The upper stage of the rocket fires again. Like the setup for a roller coaster ride, this is the big climb we've been waiting for. We are headed 3,600 miles above Earth. 15 times higher from the planet than the International Space Station. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. For this flight, it's time to head home. The upper stage of the rocket triggers separation. Orion's jets fire to turn it into the proper position to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. No matter what happens now, we're coming in. 75 miles above Earth, the spacecraft enters the atmosphere. Things happen quickly. We're now traveling more than 20,000 miles per hour. Air particles pushed out of the way heat up. An envelope of hot plasma surrounds the vehicle as it plummets towards Earth. The plasma reaches temperatures of 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, almost twice as hot as molten lava. This may be the most dangerous part of the flight. Mission Control is monitoring all the data from the spacecraft, and then we lose communication again. No data can penetrate the plasma. Orion is on its own. Orion is inside a fireball. Onboard systems ignite jets to keep the ship pointed correctly, so the specially constructed heat shield takes the full brunt of the inferno. This is the largest heat shield of its kind ever made. Orion's computers command the spacecraft to bank like an airplane, keeping a precise path to the landing site. Even though we've slowed from 20,000 miles per hour to about 300 miles per hour, we're still traveling amazingly fast. We must slow down to safely land in the ocean. Luckily, we have parachutes. 
specially designed for Orion. The parachutes help us hit the brakes, but not too quickly. One day people will be aboard, so deceleration must happen in stages to keep things comfortable for the crew. The forward bay cover jettisons. Two drogue chutes deploy and slow the returning spacecraft down to 175 miles per hour. Then, the three main parachutes open. Once fully engaged, this canopy would cover an American football field. It takes parachutes this size and strength to slow our descent to 20 miles per hour, and then, splash down. For this first flight, we won't have astronauts inside, but we still have some very precious cargo, 